I get I get it to one as well. We could like upgrade this uh, voice a little bit too, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. The first one is Daria Zeti. Come back up. Zeti Venice. Russia. I have uh, I have to say I had to try again Europe a little bit in the front. Um so Eugene, do you know if she hears here? No. I don't think I don't so, right? Here. Okay. All right. And the next uh... See, this is not working, those. Honey, click on I, the three birds. All right. Hold on to my dog. Let me get the dog out. Hold on a second. Sorry. Get out. Get out, sir. Get out, sir. He's way too loud. I know I haven't clicked on this, right? Here we go. And then go to list of works. And then first right, person. Yeah. Right. And now it works. You're right. Let's do Obviously, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> All right, here we go. Christina Gaila. Do we have Christina here? Let me look. I lost my view. Okay, I don't think we do. I don't think so either. I'm gonna go. Um, and Maria de Guita is our next. Mm -hmm. That's the same. And <clears throat> next, here we go. All right. Not here either. Uh, nine. Nine. But. Marix. Hi. Yes. Hello. 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 Uh, hello. I'm very honored <laughs> to, to show in my picture here. <laughs> it's 40 for 40 centimeters. And it's, uh, there are four canvases. Right, and it represents the Berlin Wall. Yes, yes. Because so, uh, of the colors um, and the, the modern art and this, this kind of collage, it reminds me, it reminds me some pieces of the Berlin, Berliner Mauer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, if I say it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you do, you do. Uh, I have a question. Did you actually go out and uh, get inspired by uh, uh, certain pieces of the mower? Did you like took photos and then recreated yes, some? No. Or... I, I, I actually um, trip, traveled to Berlin with my husband. Yes. Mm -hmm. We said um, when we were kings, when we were kings, <laughs> we now have the two girls <laughs> with two girls, <laughs> our two girls. Yes, it reminds me this kind of 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 street art. Mm -hmm. Yes, and is it mixed media? Is it like uh, or is it a print? Yes, it's mixed, mixed media. media. Have wallpaper, acrylic, and this this. One, uh, the the golden one here are left is the um, I I don't know how it say when you open the when you open the the paint bottle this is um, dry. Oh yeah 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 on top of the lid like the little the little yeah. uh, oh yeah 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 really mm -hmm. Not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I don't know how, how to say, how much to I, say. Honestly, I don't, I don't either how you call this. Do you, is there a name for it, Eugene? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think there's a name for it, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> cool. All right. 
if nobody has more questions, I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Next up is Matuk, and I know Matuk is here. Yeah. Um, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to see you again. Thank you for featuring me. Um, so this um, I I made three years ago, I think. Um, when I was um, in, a, in a very transitional um, time of my life. Um, and uh, that was when I finished it. And um, I think it goes well with the theme of uh, Erneuer. Um, actually, the, the one I wanted to feature for this, um, I'm still working on it. It's not finished yet, but I think this, this can go. Um, <laughs> With the, with the rest of the, of the works. Uh, it's a sunset, but it can also be sunrise. Um, so it's, it can also symbolize some, a beginning of the and a renewal. Um, it's an oil painting. It's an oil painting? It is oils on paper. I know I very much like it. It's very different from a lot of your other works, but this one definitely has a very emotive uh, to it, if that makes sense. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I don't normally do landscapes, but um, I think I have two or three um, pieces like this. And it's very therapeutic when you're making them because you need to uh, paint every branch individually, and it's uh, it's very relaxing. I found it's it's really really therapeutic. Yeah, it's interesting that you did this. I was wondering, like, because it's so detailed, you know, the little branches and stuff. Um, yes. You, and I see the little hearts in there, you know. Um, I was spotted. Thank you. Yeah, it's really uh, very detailed. I love I love it. And Eugene is right, it's very different from your usual art. And I'm actually, I can't wait to see the new piece. You're working on it right now too. I had a break from painting, uh, but I'll, I'll be back on it soon, so. Yeah. Okay. So you, you said this is, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you, you said this was unfinished. You're still gonna work more on this this piece? Uh, no, sorry. Um, so the piece I'm working on now, one of the pieces I'm working on, working on now, uh, would be better for this exhibition. Uh. The theme is renewal, um, but because it's not finished yet, I didn't want to submit it. Um, so this is the second, second one I had that can be linked to the renewal theme. Um, oh, then I also cannot wait to see the next one. <laughs> I have a question. This is finished, just, just to clarify, this is all finished. Yeah, Larry, I have you had a question? Yes. Um, so <clears throat> this is different from your other work I've seen. At what point did you decide to go into this landscape painting? Actually, this one is quite old and um, oh, okay. um i think I'm, I'm still testing different different techniques and different subject matters um i think that was the last uh, landscape nature painting i did and that was three years ago okay um and i don't think i will make one like that again because um yeah, yeah it's i just um <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's the direction I want to go, but, um, but I like it. I have a sentiment for it. But the, the one you're talking about that's unfinished, does it reference this piece? Uh, no, it's completely different. It's, uh, it's a bit okay. surreal. Um, yes, it's just surreal. Okay. Okay. 
creepy. It's so beautiful. Beautiful place. Two people said it. This is so beautiful. And I really love what you said about it being therapeutic. It really translates for the viewer as well, at least for, I mean, I'm sure for many people. I wonder how big is it? I think uh, the description here says the, the size. I think it's, um, if I remember right, it's about 45 centimeters by 50 or 60. Okay. So it's yeah. really and I really like what you said it could be sunrise or it could be sunset like mm -hmm. it could be the beginning or it could be the end who knows I love it yes thank you Nirali. thank you it's, it was actually the evening that's why the, the title is the, the, the advent and um, it was um, based on a photo of an actual sunset but um, for some it can be a sunrise and, and a beginning and as I said for me that was a beginning of a a new chapter in life at the time so i decided to submit it i love it thank you, thank you for your beautiful work Thanks i'm gonna so follow thank you matthew okay our next is my list do we have natalia kuchinskaya Yes, uh, it's my work at work. Uh, it's uh, Lina Kat. Um, uh, the work I presented here is a diptych, uh, called Men and Women. Um, hmm, at first, you might think we are separate images of uh, a male and female doses, um, uh, but notice uh, what he, he has a tattoo on his chest, uh, the man. Uh, what's a uh, white rose, which is a symbol of in love, uh, which uh, hints at their rel rel relationship. Um, uh, with Lena Katz, uh, I made um, uh, one year ago in uh, 2021. Uh, um, and I printed uh, with, um, with gold ink on uh, mulberry paper. Do you understand me? <laughs> yes. Yes, let me go to the next one too. I think, yeah, here we go. It was just uh, wrong. So this is the man. Yes, man and woman. Any questions? These are, yeah, uh, these are beautiful. I love the reductive quality. And uh, is the uh, material handmade paper? What? Is the material that you're working on paper? Yes, it's a paper, Melbourne paper, uh, um, uh, Chinese paper, very thin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the... Uh, the insignia, which looks like a stamp, is that your signature? That's next to the figure? Sorry. The little uh, square at the bottom of the male figure. He's is talking about signature? this one here. Uh, okay, uh, size. Size of prints. Yes, yes, no? oh, okay. yes, it's a ah, okay. thing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, uh, a square. Yeah, I was just looking up. You said it was lean, lino cut, so it's a lino special cut. kind of paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do you know lino cut? I, I never yeah. heard of it actually. Uh, Lina cut refers to printed graphics. Uh, uh, when uh, first the lino block is cut. And uh, when a print run uh, is printed from, from it on a printing press. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, um, only five prints I have, I have got. Yeah, limited edition, yeah. Very limited. limited. <laughs> yeah, and I just see like 61 centimeter by 65. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Okay. Yes, I love it too. And I see some other person in text or chat also saying, I, I, what I love, this is Nirali. What I really like is the kind of similarity between the two. They're almost the same size, you know, mm -hmm. there's no polarization of this is the man and this is the woman. Like the sizes are almost same. And that one is a little more effeminate because of the beautiful tattoo and the structure. Really, really beautiful work. And I think your medium also helps you a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna go here and then go next. Here we go. And thank you for joining us, Natalia. Okay, on the next, uh, Penny Stewart, which I don't think we have her here. Oh, and I forgot to put Natalia's info in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go next, yes? Yeah. Promote. Do we have Promote here? I thought he was coming. Okay, no, I don't think so. Okay. And I have no idea how to pronounce this, but uh, P H T T. I don't either. <laughs> uh, I actually follow him on Instagram, and there was his real name, but I. Uh, uh, Pavel, I believe. Uh, is he here? Uh, I'm looking. Okay. I don't think so. Which I I'd like to know more about that piece mm -hmm, too. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do next. Uh, we have Tanya Kuprianova. See if we have her here. I don't okay, I'm not. I don't see her either. All right, I'm and gonna go next. Gabriella. There we go. Yes, hi everyone. Hi. Great to be with you all once more. <laughs> so uh, this is a collage, a photo collage, and um, it's part of a series of three pictures only, and it's called Into the Light. And I made these using scenes from my doinas, as usually doinas are my dance videos. And um, the, uh, the small, tiny little series is about uh, the process of mourning, really, and what it means to lose whatever is important to you. It can be a person, it can even be yourself, touch, lose touch with yourself. Um, and yeah, that's what this series is about. And this is the last picture of the series. Um, and I thought this was pretty much uh, the theme, really, renewal, because the process of mourning is always, you know, um, letting go of the old and opening up to the new. And uh, it's, it's an inner process, really. And um, I made these what, four years ago, I think. And uh, I find that this series is pretty much, um, how shall I say, um, pretty much says what, what, what is going on right now, at least for me, in this situation that we're, uh, that we're in, you know, where there was a lot of personal, individual, and also societal trauma. And we've lost a lot in the past almost three years. And it's time to renew and to rebirth in a way also. Yeah, I have to say the, uh, the canvas, like the, uh, the background, not the, uh, not the uh, figure, reminds me almost of like uh, concrete I used to play outside, you know, when I was a kid and you just draw something on it. And then uh, there's like the light coming back to, through the tree or something, the morning sun or something. It's really, uh, really pretty. Yes, thanks. And this is a, also a, a limited edition print. You have eight of those. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I have a question. Um, have you ever thought about doing a stencil of that figure like in for street art? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think it would make a great one, really. Sorry? I think it would be a really nice street art piece, just as a stencil or a wheat paste transfer. Yeah, could be. Feel yeah. free to go ahead and do it. <laughs> It's like Gabriella, okay, you come to LA and you just do it all over the city, and then we know that Gabriella was there. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't uh, particularly, how do you call it? I'm not so connected to my art that I say nobody can use it. I mean, if you like the idea, take it and use it and do with it whatever you think, you know. Okay, I'll send you an image. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Gabriella. It was nice to have you again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Okay, let me do next. Okay, let's see. And we are on Seelenfarben. Is Laviella here? Lavilia? Lavilia? Nope. Ah, uh, nine. Nine. Uh, uh, Margarita Sulia Eva. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go next. Oh, see, this is so uh, wrong. Hold on. Next. Oh, no, that, that's right. Keep going. Here we uh, go. That was in the middle. Um, Margarita Margarita. Okay, and the next, uh, uh, Austin Lubetkin. I didn't see we had Austin, let me look. I don't either. Okay, no. Uh, how about David Mira? Mexico, no. I'm gonna go next. David, I know David is here. I saw David. Hi, I'm right here. <laughs> Thank you both very much for um, including my work. I really, really do love your, your gallery shows, the ideas that you put behind them, and uh, the opportunity to present my work. Um, this kind of goes, okay, I'll tell you what this is inspired by. One, this is inspired by the renewal. I looked up renewal in the dictionary and the thesaurus. I know I actually have a, th a physical thesaurus. And, um, and I looked up the word renewal and got emerged, discover, examine, things of that sort. And so I shot, I shot the images with that in mind, as well as reaching back to a childhood visual and created a homage to Diana Ross in the movie Mahogany in the makeup montage and modeling montage where uh, she's modeling in a sock with an overhead light. And uh, it's actually like a big, huge nylon sock. And um, I found one at a um, lingerie store. So I um, actually picked the perfect person to shoot in it. And he just kind of went to town uh, in movement. And I explained to him the object that we were going for. You know, we had definitely had a, um, a goal. And um, it was through these movements that, you know, I got my, I got my desired end result. And, um, that maybe was the first time that it happened that I stuck to my I stuck to my my own guidelines and didn't take a, take a tangent. But like in this particular case, it's it succeeded. Uh, I think the images are beautiful. I uh, think they're poetic, um, ballet like, um, and they also follow. Um, another thing that I had been examining for when this was, when this show was announced, I thought about doing flowers because I always do flowers. Um, and so I photographed a flower 
as it was blooming, as it was emerging from its, its pod. And um, this also follows the same type of beauty and grace that a, a bud into bloom has. So, thanks. Or I even get a feel of uh, emerging from a cocoon in a sense too. Mm -hmm. But I think Connie can say this too. I, I, I always love between a uh, photographer and a model when you get that symbiosis and it really works out in the end product. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it's not easy too. It really, really works in those photos. Um, and you know, you know when it works when you shoot it, right? You see it like right away what works and what doesn't work. And sometimes you have like the best ideas and you, you, you do it and it just doesn't translate. But this translates very well. Thank you. That's when you go on tangents of other ideas and start picking up stuff from the floor and say, put this on. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You have to be spontaneous too in this moment, yeah. No, very pretty. Thank you. Yeah, and we Thank loved you. it too, that it was not because we are like, you know, we love your flower pictures anyway, but it was really nice to see something different from you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I can see this is a video also um, because there's so much movement and it's so lyrical that it would also be set to music in some way in, in, in a video. Performance art, I, I just, it's like, I love, like, I love these. Well, it was set to music in my head the love theme to mahogany. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of corny, but like it was just, I've been fascinated with that scene since I was like, I don't know, nine. Um, so, and also there's a, a beautiful overhead lit image of Diana Ross that in a red, um, magenta negligee looking dress that also inspires a lot of my lighting. I love that you found you use this opportunity to um, explore even more something that you've had a fascination with your whole life. I mean, what a, what a great experience to be able to do that. Thank you. It was a great movie, huh, Marta? All right. Uh, thank you, David. I'm going to go thank you. next and see if Eric Sanders, and I don't think he's here. Let me look really quick, though. OK, no. Um, okay. Alexander Kapitanchuk. I probably did terrible with that name. <laughs> I think you did very good though. No, Alexander? No, let's go next. Hey, Ava. Oh, we know you are here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so this uh, was part of a series. I had an opportunity to do a small work challenge and um, the pieces inspiration came from uh, when I went hiking and we know that in California we're plagued with a lot of fire uh, and we went hiking to the mountain area where the people that did the uh, gender reveal uh, party that burned the um, a lot of uh, Inland Empire area. And it was very devastating to be in that element and seeing the destruction from that fire. And it felt like I was in a black forest. But as we hiked through, one of the things that I started to 
um, noticed and pointed out to the person that led us on the hike was the little seedlings and the little uh, new growth that was just coming up. They were so tiny, but they were right, like trying to peep through the dead leaves and things like that. So when it was time for me to work on the series, it, it's something that stayed in my mind and I felt like I wanted to do something about it. So I did a series, not knowing that you guys are having this exhibition about renewal. Uh, the, the series is uh, it's called Revivication, which is the same thing as renewal. Uh, and um, so this is uh, two pieces from that uh, collection. Um, there were a total of 20 in the series that I did. Um, the Stuart, the one selected for this show. But that was how the inspiration came from from all the devastation, from all the fire that we had, there's always hope and there's always renewal. There's always new growth and new birth with everything come into light. Uh, yeah, so these are very small. <laughs> so there's six, six by six. So that's it. Actually for six by six, I love the, the amount of detail you've got into these too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the little uh, uh, dots are supposed to represent the seeds, the, the, the seeds that's going to regenerate and renew to new life, to new growth, and rebuild the forest. Yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> it's really beautiful. It reminds me of a, uh, like early, 20th century uh, work by the artist Will Henry Stevenson. And it was during a period where a lot of artists are coming back from the war, back to home. And this was for him, the Appalachian Mountains and his understanding of abstraction and his interpretation through landscape of that abstraction. It, it might be interesting for you to look at it. Will Henry Stevenson. Stevenson. Thank you. I will. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not a landscape, uh, you know, artist and stuff, but um, trying to um, take that landscape and put it in abstraction and still be able to carry the message through. I uh, did a lot of studying, and before I got started with the series, there was a lot of uh, photo reference that I took while we were on the hike uh, to kind of uh, look back and. Uh, and use it. And so they were very instrumental in getting the pieces finished. About 10 years ago, we were um, evacuated for a fire in our area and our house was fine. But I just remember coming back in the whole area and that was the first thing I noticed not long after were the, the small growth that was coming up that I had never, it was almost like not just renewed, but completely new. Like I'd never seen these plants before. And um, mm -hmm. it was just so interesting that it brought like um, kind of a purpose to everything that happens that, you know, these wouldn't be growing if this didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I love, I love these pieces. I love your work. I'm, I'm kind of a big fan. So, um, so thank you, Monica. Sure. I love your work too. <laughs> yeah. I have to agree with Monica too. I mean, I love your work too, and I love uh, your choice of colors, especially all the time. That's just gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, this is a. Uh, it it was very. It was it, so so when when I saw the title for this for this exhibition, it was like, oh, you know. We're all thinking about renewal. We're all thinking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, rebut. We're all thinking, and it's not just in landscape, in a whole lot of things. And I just felt like this series was was made, and um, it's really, it was like I didn't have to make anything for this exhibition because it was already there, and the title, everything, you know, fall into places. Very nice. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.
And if you're interested in seeing the rest of the series, it's on my website. Perfect. Thank you, Adiola. Glad to have you with us again. Mm -hmm. I know Holly is here too. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, so this is a life-size piece. So it's four feet by four feet. So you can feel like you're standing right in front of the Joshua tree that's speaking to us, saying hello. Um, it's digital art printed on metal. I'm also interested in printing it in uh, silver gelatin, but I haven't done that yet. I think it would be fun and sparkly. It would be really, look really good that too, I think. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just love when nature just jumps out and says hello and this particular limb of this joshua tree it just feels like a puppet <laughs> like it's talking to us mm -hmm. um, and for me in terms of renewal uh photography and especially black and white photography my first love and i've been taking photographs my whole life um but I haven't been thinking about them or focusing on them as my art. And so this piece in particular kind of brought things in focus for me saying, oh, okay, let's renew that love. Let's, uh, let's get back to making photographs art and getting to share that, you know, these moments with other people. No, I love that and add to that. Uh, we get a lot of painters, but not very many photographers. So we like to have that in there too. Yeah, and this will be, I'm dating myself, but when, when you mentioned that it kind of looked like a puppet or saying hi to you, it totally reminded me of, you know, the original Adams Family and that little tree that Morticia had that she fed hamburger. Yes. <laughs> kind of of <laughs> yes. I have to, I have to look this up as German. I don't know what you're talking about, but I will. I'll find it. <laughs> But yes, a very beautiful shot. And, and it's that, that branch in the foreground that really makes it too. Mm -hmm. It's like right at you. Yeah. yeah the, com the composition is just, like I, and they use a negative space. And I, I love everything about it. I just, I wish this were in my house, honestly. <laughs> but honey, it it's, it's, like it's, it's digital photography. It's not film, yeah? Correct. Okay, because it almost looks like a little bit, it could be film too. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the idea yeah. with the treatment of it. I love film. Um, yeah, me too. So yeah, the dark room is a good place, mm -hmm. but there's so, it's, we have so many opportunities to change and create images the way we want in the digital space that, uh, you know, don't have to have all the chemicals. <laughs> yeah. I loved your like idea of point. having printed on the silver, silver something. Yeah, silver uh, gelatin. gelatin. Silver gelatin, yeah, because I've seen things printed on that. And um, that's just sexy. I love that. <laughs> it is. It has a depth and a sparkle to it. Um, I grew up in Alaska. And so a lot of the nature photography um gets printed in in silver gelatin mm. and it's just very pleasing yeah oh yeah uh, i hope you did that. yeah <laughs> thank you guys thank you thank you Happy with us again okay our next is camelita hi <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Good, good. So, oh, I'm supposed to say a little bit about this painting. Yes, huh? Sorry, I just joined in. Yeah, hi. 
Um, hi, everybody. My name is Camelita, and I am in Moreno Valley, California. Who? Um, the most boring place ever, but okay. <laughs> but um, hey, so anyway, this painting, um, it's titled um, Because We Fear to Hope. Um, I was watching, you know, that show, uh, The Witcher? Um, yeah. You know, it's one of this love drama scene, stupid scene, but anyway. So anyway, I saw that, that one particular scene, uh, what she said actually hit me. Like, oh, okay, we fear to hope. I guess that was a problem. I guess, you know, for me, um, getting a little personal, I suppose. It was like, when I, anyway, never mind. I'm being a bit dramatic. Anyway, I've been single for 20,000 years already. So I, and I'm, I, that made me think, like, why the hell am I single, right, for so long? And that word, though, you know, we fear to hope was the, basically it that I thought, hmm, maybe I don't want to be with anybody because I'm scared, you know? And, um, because I'm so used to being on my own and I'm pretty cool and pretty happy. So having being meeting somebody that might jack up my life, you know what I'm saying? So that was the whole thing. So anyway, after that show, I painted this and this is the end of that is basically the result of we fear to hope. It's very simple. That's it. What do you think? Do you guys like it? I like it. I like Love the it. colors a lot too. Yeah, definitely. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, this is not. Um, I. I. If you guys don't know, I'm a finger painter, so this is solely. Uh, this is using my finger. I did not use any brush at all. This is just one yeah. finger. This one, one finger only. And um, yeah, I don't know why I chose a color. Uh, I'm pretty into everything. Is intuitive to me and. Um, I just chose this color, these colors just because I don't even think much about it. And uh, when I paint it, I just let my fingers roll really. And like I said, this is a result. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> if I may say so. Speaking as a painter, I think that I see a lot of just real confidence in how you approach a canvas, you know. There's a lot of courage in your painting. So salute, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that, yeah. thank you. I love your hands-on approach. And um, also <laughs> your personality, it like, it, it matches with the energy of your work and it's, it's just awesome. It's thank gorgeous, you. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I love, I love, I love colors and um, I love to see, I like to, put them together, you know, how I don't really think much about it, as I was saying. And, um, you know, I, I love to see, I love contrasting. I don't like shades, you know, it's kind of boring, like red, slightly lighter red and lighter red. I, shades are boring to me. I like it to be bold and crazy, but when they go together, they just come out pretty amazing. I just love, love, love colors, essentially that. Because, you know, it's, it's contrasting. I don't like black and red, Meh, boring. I like black and, you know, red and blue and, you know, all mix it all together. You know what I'm saying? That's it, it you know, so, and when I paint, again, I don't really think I just keep on playing, playing, I just keep, I just let it roll. Whatever happens, whatever the results, cool, I'm happy. If it is ugly, so what? You know, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and I don't think as an artist, we should be, as an artist, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a professional or a, a fantastic artist either, but as an artist, I think everything has to come from your heart. It's all has to be intuitive. If I actually have to think, if I have to actually plan it like this, like this, it's going to, it's going to be nasty. So, you know, I think, you know, it, 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 we have to paint truly from our heart. That's it. Right. I'm being dramatic a bit. Sorry. I don't think that's, that's dramatic. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you, you just said everything every, uh, a lot of people think, you know, maybe don't say it in the same way, but it's, uh, it's so true, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest with you, sometimes I feel I don't fit into be with other artists. 
I feel uncomfortable sometimes when I go to gallery openings, when I talk to fellow artists, because everybody seems to be so deep and I'm not. <laughs> And I'm not. I swear to God, I just love to play with colors. That's it. I don't think. And whatever that, you know, uh, the results is purely from my day to day feelings. And I think I told some, you know, some of you who know me, I, you know, even when I think about, oh, shit, I'm hungry for some tacos, man. But let me paint first. And then the colors that I choose somehow or other is all about tacos. And I name my painting on tacos or my favorite fried chicken wings, you know, those are my stuff. You know, I don't, I'm just not deep. Let's just put it that way. So when I talk to artists, I don't know how, I don't know whether they get me. I, but who cares? As long as I'm happy. That's what matters. And it shows in your work. <laughs> yeah, I have to. I have to agree with you, uh, Eugene. And it's just what makes you happy. Uh, uh, just what you feel, uh, you feel taco, then just do it. You know. Uh, I know, I just right? Wanted to comment that the, the different level of deepness, and um, you know, you associating your painting to taco, that's deep because some people cannot do that connection. So there's different levels of deepness and stuff, and different categories. So in your form, in your way, you are deep uh, because you connect your piece to something or whatever, you know, but maybe not deep in terms of some people thinking, you know, the stars and, and you know, a galaxy and things like that. So uh, I just wanted to make that point. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, anybody who knows me knows I like to play and I like to eat and that. Uh, this is it, you know, whatever you see, this is it. Take it or leave it. This is all me. But thank you, I appreciate all of you. Oh my goodness, I feel so, so lucky, so fortunate, so um, humble that all of you feel so good about this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kamalita. Nice to thank have you. you. Again. Yes. Okay, our next one is uh, Shala. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, Marta Feinstein. Marta. I know we have Marta here. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Yes. How are you? There you nice are. Nice to see right. you, Tommy and Eugene. Happy right. New Year, everybody. Thank you. And Thank thanks you. again, Connie and Eugene, for offering these opportunities for us. And your wonderful curating and creating this 3D gallery is, is great. Um, so renewal, as we've seen by all of us, has many different interpretations and it's really exciting to, to see everybody's interpretation. Um, when I do botanical photos, I'm usually doing elements that are dead or past their life cycle. The process is kind of left and I find ways to renew them in some way. This was a flower and I liked that it had the buds growing up and I decided to shoot it while it was still relatively fresh. Um, the photos for me in my botanical photos are about transformations and transience phases of being. And so this was a photo that I shot at the time when the flower was new. And I'm sure all of you as artists, when we create something, sometimes we'll go back and look at it and we find a new meaning to it. And I call this in the pink. And that's a phrase that usually means you're at the peak of health and wellness. And unfortunately I'm not. So, when I titled it for the exhibit, it was more about um, a hope for hope for healing from medical and getting to a state of just being better from dealing with, with uh, medical issues and different conditions. So it kind of symbolizes hope. I'll, I'll show you, I just have, so if you see there's, that's dried up. Now I'm putting it to the screen. And then here's the two little buds right there. So 
I, I save my elements. So lots of lots of elements that are past their prime and um, but they still have beauty. But this was one of them that I just thought fit the theme of renewal and uh, to give hope um, and just maybe make people smile just to see something beautiful because life isn't always so beautiful. Uh, everybody's got struggles um, in some way or dealing with something. And uh, this is one of the photos I shot to just find beauty. Um, maybe when things are, are in the midst of a struggle. So, and the little, the little buds are the, the renewal here. They, did, they didn't bloom, but they still serve their purpose. <laughs> so thank you. I love the softness of this, like the, the, the world in our lives right now are often so full of like sharpness and hard angles and dead ends and flatness. And this has this depth and softness that is so calming. Like I, I could just like do some mindfulness and stare at this for a while. It's beautiful. Thank you, Monica. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I have to agree with uh, Monica. And it also, it just makes me feel like, oh, you know, it's just uh, beautiful to look at. It's like you can breathe even, it doesn't matter what's going on right now. But if you look at that, it just, uh, is, there's an ease to it. It just uh, it takes a, the hardness away, you know, it's gorgeous. Thank you, Connie, for that. Um, I, I like that, an ease to it that takes away the hardness. and. Uh, from your mouth to the universe for all of us, <laughs> that we find uh, an, an something, an, the easiness to take away all the hardness that all of us go through, no matter what it is. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Eugene. All right, our next one is Shala. Shala Javid. Shala Shala. Oh, you're muted, hon. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, showing my art. This is one of my abstract one that, as you see, it has a lot of uh, circle and squares and uh, rectangular shapes that it shows that we are all in different shapes and it's called new beginning, living young, wild and free. So um, I like to do abstract work and I thought that that would, uh, this, this would go with renewal. It's the subject matter of our show. I really like this piece too, because it, it seems different from a lot of the other ones that we've seen, but there's like looking at it, there's a lot of confidence in what you put into it too. And the layering almost looks 3D the way you did it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, my brush strokes are very strong. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a, I've been painter for a long time. So yeah, I like to create texture. So. This has a little texture, not too much, but it has textures. I like how the, the background too is like, it's like looking at the sky is what it makes me think of. Like clouds and sky and very ethereal looking. And then you have these strong, bold, confident shapes and colors. And then the, the dripping makes it, you know, softens it a little bit. So. It's almost like a, to, to me, it feels like feminine and masculine kind of dancing together. Thank you. Yeah, it is. And I have a, a message from Marta that's, uh, um, it says, I see a woman's face on the left looking down. What? Oh, on this, on this one, really? You see a woman? That's great. <laughs> I didn't I do it intentionally, but it, I, I guess it happened. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I have to agree with Monica. I love the hard edge quality of these shapes are, you know, quasi geometrical. And then just the, the kind of like evidence of a gravity when you allow those drips to take place, you know, it's just a great combination of things within the fluency of the paint and uh, the overall composition. So congratulations. Thank you, Galaxy. It's actually, uh, I, I, when I do abstract, I try to use the uh, geometric shapes, uh, where, I mean, versus uh, organic shapes. So they create a balance. This most, mostly has geometric shapes, but the drips and the, in the middle, the circle, it shows a little bit of organic shapes. Yeah, you have another one with us. Um, let me just uh, show this one to you. There we go. Yeah, that's actually called uh, the best is yet to come for this new year. Um, and it's actually it's mixed media. I did it a long time ago, but but um, again, it's very organically done. And I use uh, gesso, a lot of different. I mean, the co the colors are the. It's a limited palette. I like to use limited palettes. I think it's more successful than too many colors. But um, in this on uh, this painting, um, it's the shapes are. It's a lot of shapes, but not too many colors. The colors are just mostly green and um, yellow and orange. Yeah, and this piece is a little bit smaller than the other one, right? It's, um, I think it's- Yes, the other one was 36 by 36. This one, I think is tw uh, 20 by 24 or yeah. 24 high by 20, yeah. yeah, wide. Okay, um, let's go to next. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Shala. We have Yoshi, I think. Did I say it right, Yoshi? Mm -hmm. uh, Eugene is, I thought. Yeah, I think I'm unmuted now. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Hi, I'm Yoki. Uh, I'm happy to be here for, I think, the third time. Thank you for including my painting. This painting is titled um, Under Blue Skies. It's um, on an oil painting on canvas, uh, 60 by 48. It's a big painting. You can't really... Um, uh, get um, you, you can't really understand the size of it unless uh, somebody stands next to it. And um, I painted that with uh, with the feeling of uh, renewal, actually, without knowing that uh, this exhibition will uh, will happen. And it's all about uh, breathing and uh, opening to the sky and be outside and have um, like uh, air and nature and uh, hope and a little prayer. Are those letters in the background behind the flowers is it say it again it looks like there's letters painted on the sky no 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 it's only color um yeah it's only color there's there are no letters yeah. no it's beautiful thank you <laughs> is it painted by, with oil or uh, acrylic it's oil it's oil on canvas. I always paint with oil. All my paintings are oil. It's beautiful. Yeah. And the lilies, which are the flowers in the painting, are, I use them um, 
many times in my paintings, not only flowers and lilies. I paint also portraits, but um, I paint a lot of lilies. I love lilies. I think um, they are beautiful outside and inside. So uh, I really love painting uh, lilies. Yeah, it's really, really gorgeous. Thank you. Thank Yoki. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Yoki. <laughs> Sorry about uh, mispronouncing your name earlier. No, 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 that's <laughs> fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Yoki. It's good to have you with us again. Thank you. All right, our next one is Larry Cap uh, Cavini. You know, Larry is here. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so, you know, when I first, first of all, thanks for everyone, you two that put this together. I, of all the openings I go to, I think this is, on an international level, it, it gives such a fresh perspective of things going on. Uh, globally, so it's I find for me more interest than something localized these days. So it's great. Uh, when I first heard this term renewal, I guess the first thing that came to mind was my own past, my own history of uh, labor, you know, working in jobs and so forth. And uh, so I put together this poem, and then I'll follow up with any questions you have. But in reference to the painting. Here we go. The title is Infested Moment. From his cubicle through his tunnel, he ends at the HR office. Eyes to eyes, breath to breath, fake smiles abound. With meaningful small talk, then, I'm sorry, Jason, but we'll have to be ending your position here starting today. And in one heated, festive moment, Jason felt some kind of freedom. So for me, in terms of, you know, most of my life has been as a working artist in regards of working jobs and going home and spending whatever time and energy I have on making art. And uh, so there was those fleeting moments, even though it met unemployment, destitute, I, you know, those small windows of time always felt a sense of renewal. I love this, Larry, like all your work, so much movement um, and joy and like makes me want to dance. Um, I just, this is, I think it really epitomizes the feeling of what this is about. I really love it. Thank you, I appreciate that. I like it because it's loosely painted. I think you are a loose loose painter, I think, that it doesn't show every detail of it. It's not, it, it's very loosely painted. And it's like, it shows the artist's confidence. Yeah, I like, you know, uh, the expression and the evidence of the artist's hand, you know, the evidence of paint, evidence process. Um, and uh, so, yeah, in that within a figure, I enjoyed even more with the uh, spatial differences and everything that goes on with it. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I concur with the, there's a lot of energy in this piece. Uh, with the movement, the gesture, and uh, and I love the red, you know, because it almost elevates that feeling uh, and uh, the energy that's in the piece. Red is a very powerful color. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Larry. Thank you, bravo. 
Our next one is Monica Marks. There we go, Monica. Well, you already know I'm here because I can't stop talking. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you for including me again. I love for the same reason as Larry said. I just love. Um, first of all, I love accents, and there's always a good variety of accents at these. And uh, I love seeing art from around the world, and I just I love your shows. Um, I actually did this, I think, 2019 or early 2020. Um, the title "Get Out the Map" is a, a Indigo Girls song, and um, of which I'm a huge fan. And um, I, it just, I miss traveling. And there's so much of the world I haven't seen yet. And every year I keep thinking, okay, this is gonna be the year I get to travel. Um, I was good. It goes back to, my husband and I were gonna go to um, Europe right before 9-11. And so every time we try to go to Europe, something happens. <laughs> so I should warn you if we are planning a trip to Europe at some point, um, and it was based on that. This is unlike most of the pieces I do because it's very flat. Um, it's more collage than assemblage. And I've been doing a little more assemblage than collage and more paint. This is um, some paint and, um, but a lot of it is collage with the figure. And um, there's questions that I, I found in a book and I cut them out and I put them uh, along the side that has to do with things about travel and you know what do you want to do when you get there and what is calling you and um i just i want to see more of the world and i'm just i chose this one because again beginning at beginning of the year and i'm like maybe this year i'm gonna get to see the world and actually go to some of the places that some of the wonderful artists here are from um and that's that's my hope I really like this. I <clears throat> it just totally fits the idea of you traveling, you know. Because I see, you know, a little while ago, I remember us talking about you being at a, a swap meet or a flea market, something like that. And yeah. I can just see you, like, okay, she's the collector. I can only imagine her studio space, what stuff she's got in there, and you know, and just, you know, and. I love the, the, the text that you've added to this, you know, it, not only within the content, but the texture that it gives it, it really amplifies the whole piece too. And the monochromatic quality of the figure to the text, it's aesthetically, it's a really beautiful piece. So bravo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have to say for me too, it works really well, the collage, because, you know, sometimes they're a little uh, thrown together. This seems like it's all working really, really nicely. And also, mm -hmm. um, I see the traveling, you know, and everything. And also, uh, I noticed up there, the New York and Gable, it also, uh, uh, for me as an immigrant, New York also has a, a double meaning, you know, when the mm -hmm. ships came over from Europe also. Um, so this is all like uh, a big new beginning, uh, even in this um, uh, sense as well. My my daughter went to college in New York and had to come home early and do remote learning because of the pandemic. But before that, we were going to New York all the time, which was wonderful because I love New York, except it was the only place we were going. So um, <laughs> Now, now we haven't even gone back there yet, but um, I, it's like, this is great, but I want more. I want to see the world. Yeah. And, yeah. and I like the, and the song, the lyrics in the song of Get Out the Map is just, is basically just go anywhere. It's not like, you know, get, at the, get out the map and I don't remember the exact lyric right now, of course, mm -hmm. but just, um, <laughs> just anywhere. Yeah, well, I was going to say on this piece, I like the, the pose of the girl that she looks happy and she looks looking forward to the future, maybe looking forward to more traveling and everything, but she looks excited. She's like the chic vintage woman I wish I was. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah she, I, I felt like when I saw her in the magazine, I was like, you're going places. Yeah, she looks like she's going places. She's going places. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you.
Okay, I'm gonna do next. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Here, next is Sanchana Krishnan. Do we have Sanchana here? I don't think we do. I wish we did because I have these pieces. Okay, we can keep going. After that, Amira Montenegro. Do we have Mayra here? Okay, and our next up is our very own uh, Connie Kurtu. Ooh, there we go. Uh, I love this. What do you say, Eugene? I love this photo. Oh, thank you. It was, um, this was a time, um, well, Monica said like she, she, she wasn't traveling since the pandemic. I had to travel. My mother wasn't feeling well uh, living in Germany. So I went there. I was actually in summertime for four months in Germany. I was lucky enough to work remotely. So I worked nights um, and during the day I was able to go to with my mother, you know, to doctor's appointments and whatever you needed to do. And um, the first two months I wasn't able to read, to listen to music. I wasn't able to take any photos because we just had such a hard time there. Um, this is really the beginning when my mother was feeling better. I was able to go out and all I did, I couldn't even take photos of her. All I did was taking photos of flowers, of birds, of grass, uh, just because it just was um, almost like a escape for me to something. I needed something beautiful in my life and there was nothing right there at the moment except that. So this is for me, really the transition to um, definitely a renewal because my mother came back up too. Um, so it's like a huge symbol as well. I chose to mute the colors a little bit because it was the beginning. Uh, she wasn't quite there yet. So it was just, it's a, I did it a little bit in pink too because I wanted to see the future in pink. <laughs> um, and so, I manu manipulated a little bit the colors of the photo. Are the two flowers you, representative of you and your mother? Uh, those flowers? Yeah, because there's two. Yeah. And you and your mother. I just didn't know if that was like intentional or. Actually, no. It was just, it was a field I crossed because I went to my. She was in a hospital for this two months and I went there every day and to visit her and to bring her some stuff, what she liked or do some crossword puzzles with her or stuff. And I passed this field every day and before it was like full of uh, wheat and then it got uh, cut down too. So I got through all this, but those flowers, they came up there all the time. And there's like one of my favorite, those puppies, they're all red in Germany and it just I just love them so much. And I got the seed pots, you know, you see like the little seed pots up there. I got a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. That's um, great. Beautiful. I love the choices you made in, in the, the pinkish tint and, and having it be a little more subdued, like cautious optimism. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love the softness of the whole photograph. It's very soft and dreamy. I like that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Connie, it's, it's beautiful. I wrote, I wrote in the comments when um, well, I was happy when Eugene and you were posting your images on, online and including it. So I think that that's wonderful uh, since I know you do photography and Eugene with abstract mixed media art. So, um, but as I wrote, when I, I saw it, even on the little, you know, phone screen and it was just, it, it just took me in just uh, so much my interpretation of it the the two flowers and then hearing your story adds a whole other layer to it but but yeah just kind of the muted tones it's 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 hazy uh the way that you know you you uh have the foreground the flowers of focus and the buds and they're just a tiny little bloom right at the top there that little one and and gives the hope but it, it just also um kind of the life cycles to me uh, the, the blooming, the, the dead, dry fields and the contrast of that. But uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful photo. So glad to see your work. Oh, thank you. 
yeah, I thought it was very tender too, you know, because those flowers are so like if you don't touch them, they're like falling apart. <laughs> yeah, there's a yeah. delicacy, the ephemeral mm. quality. Uh, you know, it feels almost like a Miyazaki film. Like I want like the cute little music and the wind, and it just has so much feeling. Oh, of a story. I have to look this up. Um, like Totoro, uh, Japanese animation. Oh, I need to look this up. I'm not really, um, our kid is totally into animation and I'm absolutely not, but I'm going to look this up. <laughs> what is it, Totoro? Can, can you put this in the chat for me, please? I will put it in the chat. Yes. Awesome. Thank but you. It's, just, it's kind of, it's that like the delicate beauty and then contrasted with, you know, life and how hard life is. And it's really, really lovely. Thank you all. Thank you. Let's go next. Look at this, our very own Eugene. <laughs> Yay. Hi guys. So for, yeah, like Connie and I always try to include something of ours, but it's it like went for a while there where we don't have, uh, we just have too much to do and don't end up doing it. Or <laughs> So this time we actually both did. Uh, for renewal for uh, mine, I put two pieces here, but this was a very different thing for me to do, and I was experimenting, and so I may do some future bigger works with this. But uh, thank you, Larry, for the idea of Miracle Muck, because I reached out to Larry, because I know he uses, uh, uh, I had a bunch of cutouts of old canvases, and uh, it was paintings that I wanted to do something with, but didn't really serve any purpose anymore, and what I also did too is when I was moving, I moved to North Hollywood from downtown Los Angeles. So I went through and it was either what paintings am I taking and what am I not? And so there were a ton that I ripped off the canvas and then I went through and just however it felt right to do, cut certain pieces off. And then what I did was I took these 12 by 12 canvases and uh, painted the backgrounds first and then uh, I, I went from that and went and chose the pieces I had already cut up and then sewn them to the canvas with gold thread and adhered them uh, with Miracle Muck, uh, which actually wor works wonders. <clears throat> so the canvas is adhered and uh, then the stitching on top of it. And it's kind of incorporating, you always bring some of your past forward into new things. And so it's taking those things that uh, leaving the rest behind, but uh, taking some forward with you that benefits you. And uh, this one's called Dorio. So it kind of reminded me of, uh, um, I don't know why, but Dorian Gray. So that was the name there. And then the next one, if you want to go to that, Connie. Um, Okay, I'm having a brain moment. I totally forgot the name of it. <laughs> oh yeah, Ozendil, which is uh, actually a old Gothic word for uh, Venus Lucifer or the morning star. So renewal too, and the fact that it's a completely different route I've gone in experimentation with my work, but I really like it. So I'm probably gonna do some more things with it. I I think it, the stitching thing has really given it another, in some ways, another dimension. I think it's really cool, you know, uh, in terms of some evidence of a process. And yeah, um, forward, I'd also, I agree with that and wrote in the comment, Eugene. Um, so glad to see your work here too. Um, I've just seen it online, some different things you, you post, but, but as you said, your story um, is, is really interesting. And, and as you've, you've moved on to another chapter of your life with your family and, and um, taking the stitching and, and you know, the idea of mending could be fixing, you know, there's a lot of interpretations to that. And I don't know if you know, um, there's a whole kind of, not movement, but a whole thing in, in artwork and, and it's come into photography um, and I know that's not photography called interventions. You're intervening with the original artwork. 
Um, and that's kind of something that's really popular in photography of, of people adding things to it, um, stitching, people are doing all kinds of embroidery and you know, for all different kinds of interpretations and meanings. But your, your story, hearing what you've kind of cut out and taken with, and then you said gold thread and, and just the, the notion of the idea of gold, of, of renewal, of making something better from maybe a situation that wasn't so good and, and bringing it forward. So I, I, I like your, your story. Thank you. There's also this Eugene, uh, I think you introduced me to this story. There's a Japanese um, uh, technique where they take old uh, broken ceramic and just uh, uh, fill it in or, or glue it together with the gold, right? Kintsuji, Kintsuji. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it also reminds me of, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when they say like old, out with the old and in with the new, with the uh, renewing and so, yeah. this is also something what combines with that not all old is bad because there's parts we can take with us and in, implement in our new things and uh, yeah, and just um, live with that together, you know, as a whole. Uh, Eugene, you know, uh, this room, this this idea reminds me back in the day when I was doing collage, and uh, with just very kind of un archival kind of material. Uh, but somebody introduced the idea of now. I'm not saying you'd be interested in this, but just to throw it out there at you, uh, to Gicle. The idea is Gicle. And so I had this collage and I had it clayed onto canvas. I had two pieces, one that I could cut up, one that was the base, okay? And so, so elements of the clay that I really liked, you know, I would cut out and then literally, which I, at that point I learned how to sew somewhat, sew these elements into the clay on top of that, you know, so you have this, there's just two elements going on involved with it. I think the idea of something actual that like you do, that's more corporeal into onto the rail is interesting too. Could, could be a combination of both though. Something that's from reality, you know, that has this tactile reality to something that's more codified, that being the G clay might be interesting. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if you'd be interested in that, but this reminded me of doing that. Well, and uh, Connie nailed it too on uh, Kintsugi because that's like uh, some of my influences are Klimt in his use of metallics and then Kintsugi for that entire idea. So uh, it actually, I forgot to mention that, but it was purposeful. Uh, mm. With the gold thread, it was kind of find, finding a different way to portray that Kintsugi thought along with it. Mm. Interesting. Thank you, guys. I, I love, I'm sorry, I can't stop myself from talking. I love these, um, and I love finding things in your work. And the bottom one definitely looks like an upside down animal of some kind to me. In the top one, I think I see an animal skull with a skeleton behind it. And it's just, um, I, I love kind of getting lost in your pieces and, um, I just love this also. I love the stitching. I love that you added the stitching. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Eugene, you created a, a, a lot of textures and I love that texture combining that golden thread that it creates a texture too, to your paintings too. Well, and that was also a happy accident too. I think I talked to Monica about this, but I got some paints and kind of in the background of this one and the other one, you can probably see it but I got some uh, interference paints to try and mess with those. And the interference, yeah, there's gold interference in this one. And uh, I used them quite heavily without having used them before. <laughs> and what they do, they have a color, but you can't really see it until light hits it a certain way. But when I painted heavily with them, I hated it. <laughs> And I painted back over, but not entirely. So some of the interference colors show through. And I actually, I was like, okay, now, now I like it. Uh, so it's just a little subtle show through of the interference. And it's hard to see having it as a static image, but if you were to see it on the wall in the gallery where the light hits it a certain way, the color will reflect back to you. 
I like the, I really loved your um, gray and gold painting. Do you use a molding paste or modeling paste on that to create that texture or the texture just comes from the, the colors? Oh, part of, part of it uh, is a sponge and just uh, acrylic with no, uh, with no uh, water added to it, just uh, right yeah. from the- And with sponge, okay. It looks beautiful and I love the texture. It created a beautiful texture. I use sometimes a, a modeling paste on my painting to create the texture. That's what I ask, but that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. I um, just wanted to add uh, that I love the stitching. Um, it, you know, I did a, a solo show in August and it has to do with uh, Afro mem members. And every one of those pieces I had to stitch because it's all about mending the hat. And the intimacy of stitching the piece after you've worked on it is just on a different level uh, because of also what it brings to it, uh, adding a lot of texture to it. So I'm really digging your t um, stitching on the pieces here. Well, a little story behind that too is uh, um, during when the pandemic first started, um, Fred, uh, my partner's a costumer and uh, he was out of work for a while. So what he started doing was different types of masks. One of them was uh, the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman mask. And mm -hmm. he, he said he would never have done this by himself, but it kind of got really popular. And so I did all the stitching on it. And it's when I was recovering from surgery. So it's one of the things I could do. And if you notice the X and then the straight lines, that's all a Catwoman stitch. So <laughs> it's kind of taking that part with it too, but I love the way that it looks and continued it in that. Awesome. But yeah, I, I, you are correct. I spent a lot more time with them and became more intimate. And it, 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 it does give you that much more of a connection to your work when you spend that much time and hours with it, uh, stitching it together. And it's more uh, challenging. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, I discovered that having to stitch 24 pieces were like, oh, okay. It was intimate, but yeah, it, you know, you have to really be committed to this. Oh yeah, when you're going through painted canvas on top of painted canvas, that yeah, <laughs> I went through quite a few needles. <laughs> yeah. Thanks everybody. Okay, our next is Nirali. I know we had Nirali on, but she did tell, let me see if she's still here. She is working today. Okay, we don't have Nirali, so she had to go. Oh, and I forgot. And then our next Alejandro Vega. Do we have Alejandro here? Oh. Trying to go through and see if we do. Alejandro Vega Gaona. Okay, no. Okay. And then how about Morel Ortega? Does not seem so, but um, Penny, do we still have you, Penny Stewart? We can go back to her work, Connie. Is she here? Is she there? I think so. Hi, guys. Yes. Hi. Let me go back. I'm here in Dublin. Oh, uh, Connie, you can just do exit detail view and Hi, then guys. go. To Artist, hello. Oh, that's and then, true. Yeah. Hi. And then, hello. I'm here. We're going to your piece now. Great. Here we go. Hi, guys. It's lovely to be part of this exhibition. I'm here in Dublin tonight. It's nine o'clock, and uh, we're just we just had our dinner. But um, this is a piece I did uh, in pastels. I was trying to learn pastels because my comfort zone would be charcoals and um, it's mainly charcoal life drawing that I do. So 
so it was really fun to use the color and really kind of let go with it and Gabriel is a model that I would often draw and he's based in Berlin um in a in like a, a Berlin art school and um I would when I go to Berlin I would be in the class sort of live but during COVID I had to do it online and I wasn't sure how it would work online life drawing but it actually was really good. Now, I don't know whether that's because I know Gabriel and I know the people in the, in the art school, but it was just fantastic. Um, and I just ca sort of ca really captured them. Um, I've loads of pictures of Gabriel on my Instagram page, different ones, and he looks quite um, different, but he's got this amazing curly hair that always is really nice to draw. And, um, so yeah, it, it, that's kind of it's A3 in size, which is smaller than what I normally draw. I normally draw kind of A2, but it worked on the A3. So yeah, that was yeah. So really enjoying kind of hearing all all about the different art from you all. So it's kind of very interesting to be on the Zoom. I haven't done many Zooms. So. No, thank you. Uh, that's that's one of the uh, for all of our new people, and we're very happy to have new artists here. But uh, Connie and I, uh, it's been uh, our year anniversary was last October, but we created this during the pandemic because we wanted to get artists together, but running a gallery is too costly. But then being able to do this, we can bring a lot of different people together. And it's honestly, these uh, receptions have been one of my favorite things to do. And I look forward to all the time. And I'm not a big person with Zoom either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love I love the lines in this. They're like they're very deliberate and they're very playful at the same time. Um, and the, the way the hair kind of morphs on its own and trails off. Um, I this is I love this. Oh, thanks, Monica. Well, I want to say thank you to all of our artists, uh, our returning ones that we usually have, and uh, our new ones that we have. We always uh, love getting new artists and uh, uh, different mixes, uh, art, photography, sculpture, what have you. Uh, we will be releasing the uh, link uh, after this. We'll release it early uh, to those of you that are here. And uh, we will also be doing another open call that we'll be releasing on our site soon. It is mythology, which is uh, 